let's go straight to the issue today. Education reform is one of the issues that make students come out to protest. They even was in front of your office, and you actually get a lot of credit for when now and sitting down and talk with them. But uh, you also got criticized, but there hasn't been any much change since then. So what do you think you can do instantly, though, um, to make maybe even a small change right now? Actually, we have made a lot of progress since the uh, meeting with, with the students. We have had the plan for reform in place, um, and the prime minister has come and uh, endorsed the, the platform. We, we plan to uh, reorganize the curriculum and we have plans to uh, re-educate the teachers in order for them to be able to uh, improve their skills for the 21st century uh, demands. So, actually, there is there was in the, in the, it was in the news that in the past 20 years, Thailand has 21 uh, education ministers and they said it's one of the reasons that the reform hasn't happened because each one has been working not even a year. What is your perspective? What do you think is the real reason that the reform hasn't happened? I, I think that's part of the problem, the continuity uh, from policies to policies. Uh, what I'm trying to do is to lay down the foundation for the next minister uh, to carry on that hopefully be the foundation to improve education in Thailand. Okay. By making sure that curriculum are up to date, make sure that digital technology will be in place to help the students increase their ability and make sure that the teachers will be able to improve themselves with the skills necessary in the 21st century. So in your perspective, what would be the most important thing that needs a reform? Is it the curriculum? Is it the teachers? What do you think needs to be reformed the most? Okay, I think the uh, understanding each student have different needs, different skills, different ability. Okay, therefore the curriculum needs to have flexibility to display the student's ability. At the moment, we are putting one standard to measure the student's ability. We need to be flexible. We need to have curriculum that uh, hone their skills. And then we need to realize the gifted skills that each student has. And then we have to understand the demand of the industry. And then we hear the students' ability towards those demands. But how are we going to do that though? Retain our teacher from all over the country? That is such a big task. How, how can we start that? Yes, um, even though it's a big task, we, we have to do. There's, nothing, there's no other way that we can approach these changes without the understanding of the teacher. Um, you have to admit that uh, we have skilled teachers, we have teachers who have kind hearts, uh, wanting to teach the students. But the demand of the world today uh, requires different skills than what the teachers have been uh, accustomed to. So we need to uh, change their skills. We need to adapt their ability to help the students with the digital technology. It's going to take time. It's not going to be one or two year process. It will take three or four years in order to complete the whole program. It is a long term plan indeed. And like you said before, I think one of the issue is the continuity in the plan or how to execute them. Statistically, I'm not saying that you might not be able to carry on, but statistically, we don't have the minister that will stay more than one year. If anything happened that you will not, that you will move on to do other ministry or somebody else will take over from you, do you think this project, this idea of a retrain the teacher will, will keep going? Yes, I think 
the moment I've passed the you know, average 11 months of being minister at the Ministry of Education. Okay, so I hope that I would be able to continue. Um, I have discussion with the Prime Ministers. Um, I'm not looking to move to other ministries. Uh, as long as we can do the, the job here, I'm sure that we can carry on with the, with the plan. Um, the training program, the training curriculum for teachers are in place. The budget are in place for uh, Human Capital Development Center uh, throughout the nation, 183 center that would be uh, center for uh, improving the skills of the teachers. And we hope that um, this program be able to, to improve the, the necessary Necessary skills. And this may not sound a bit uplifting, but how does it feel to know that the Thai education has been poor compared to other Asian countries? It's, it's, it's a reality. Uh, it's what has been uh, going on for many, many years. I think we have tried, but uh, we have not been successful. We have to admit that, and we have to take it in approach to make sure that um, we can reach our potential. Thailand has great potential, but um, we have not utilized it. We have not uh, fully understand how to achieve goals. You have to look at the, uh, the medical industry. I have to say that we are one of the top uh, in the world, we rank up there. If you look at all the, the personnel that are involved in the medical industry, they are from our educational system. They, they're not from overseas. Mm. Uh, most doctors are educated in Thailand. Most nurses, the medical personnel, are educated in Thai system. So we have the ability to bring out the best in this sector. Why can't we do it with any other uh, profession or any other sector? Right. We can do it. We have to put our minds and then put a proper plan. One of the problems that a lot of people say that is the inequality in the education standard in the schools over Thailand. And I would have to say that some parents have to throw money for their children to have good education or even move to close to school or some children have to wake up at 5 a.m. in the morning to go to schools across town because the one near their home is not good enough. How can we fix this problem? Okay. If we look at the bottom line of the schools, we have too many schools. We have 30,000 schools. Therefore, the budget are allocated uh, or distributed uh, evenly you know, throughout the nation. It's not concentrated uh, budget application. We need to reduce the number of schools. Um, we need to bring all these schools. The number is maybe 10,000, 20,000, 25,000. Whatever it is, it has to be quality schools. At the moment, we are not providing that. We are providing schools close to home, um, make it convenient for parents to send, send their children. But along the way, we are not providing quality along with the number of schools. We need to take that challenge. We have to reduce the number of schools and allocate it budget properly. So in your perspective, how can we bridge the inequality gap between the good schools and those that are not up to standard? What would be the best way? Okay. We have to have good quality schools spreading throughout Thailand. It doesn't have to be in large quantity. Uh, in high numbers, but in each city, maybe we, if we look at 10, you know, top secondary schools. At the moment, there are one or two. So everybody is looking to come into one of the schools. Uh, if we have 10 within the city, spreading strategically throughout the city, I believe that we can achieve the quality or equality that we are looking for. So 
One other thing that students, the protesters said that you are not qualified to be the education minister. I want you to tell them to ensure them you are actually a qualified and they are in good hands. What can you say to them to make them believe that? Uh, if you really look at my background, my family on school for over 50 years, what my family and my wife and uh, we have had international schools. We have looked at maybe over all these schools all over the world, you know, in the U.S. and in other countries. So I understand the system, the educational system that it's necessary to bring out the top quality uh, students. Can I translate the knowledge into bringing the high school? That's remained the okay, I have to take all the knowledge that I have and then uplifting the educational system in Thailand. So right now, you have the material um, what you need is time and a tool to make it happen. Hopefully, we will see the change, and hopefully you'll be with us more than average. The Thai education <laughs> minister has been in any government in the past 20 years. Okay, thank you very much. That's the average, okay. but we don't have much. Uh, how, how long have you been the minister again, sorry, um, for the education? A little bit over a year, maybe 14 months. 14 months. Oh, yeah. so you're already above average. Yes, I'm above average. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's great for us. So hopefully you will stay even longer and be able to do what you said that you were going to do. And that will be a big change because I believe that human resources is very important. It's important yes. for our future. Yeah, it's it's going to take um, efforts for all um, from the state sector, private sector, um, from the international sector. Um, everybody who's involved in wanting to improve education, we have to put our efforts together. I'm, I'm, I'm sure that we can do it within Thailand. You know, we don't need uh, help from anybody else. Is it within our control to make it happen? One last question. How do you want the world to see Thai education? Okay. Um, given time, maybe in the next five years, if we are able to revamp the whole operation within the Ministry of Education, you know, I want us at least at the top, near the level of Singapore, uh, and hopefully in the long run, we can be on the top of the world. It's a big goal, big challenge, but I think we are 